spring heel Jack. I saw those two words in the paper this morning, and my God, how they take me back. All that was eight years ago, almost to the day. My dad wanted my analysis of the situation. He was all bluff and hearty and man to man. My mother just wanted me to stay home. But I didn't want to stay home. I was enchanted. Enchanted by that dark and mist-blown strawberry spring. And by the shadow of violent death that walked through it on those nights eight years ago. The shadow of Spring-Heeled Jack. In New England they call it a strawberry spring. No one knows why. It's just a phrase the old-timers use. They say it happens once every eight or ten years. What happened at New Sharon High School that particular strawberry spring? There may be a cycle for that too, but if anyone has ever figured it out, they've never said. On the night of March 13th, 2016, everything changed. It was the first day back from spring break. Ten minutes after 11 on that night, a junior named John Dancy, on his way back from a long night of studying, began walking into the fog, staring at the sprawled legs of the dead girl lying in the shadowy corner of the school hallways, her throat cut from ear to ear, but her eyes open and almost seeming to sparkle as if she had just successfully pulled off the funniest joke of her young life. Dancy, a straight-A student, ran and ran and ran. The next day was overcast and sullen, and we went to classes with questions eager in our mouths. Who? Why? When do you think they'll get him? And always a final thrilled question. Did you know her? We all knew her. Her name was Gail Kerman, and she was an art student. She wore granny glasses and had a good figure. She was well liked, but her friends had secretly hated her. She had never gone out much, even though she was one of the most promiscuous girls on campus. It was strawberry spring, and no one walked by themselves through the half academical, half fantastical high school that night. The fog had come again, smelling of the sea, quiet and deep. Around lunchtime, my best friend Logan found me. I'd been busting my brains on an essay all morning, and what he said to me completely destroyed my train of thought. Yo, I just heard they caught him. From who? I don't know, some grade 10. It was her boyfriend that did it. His name was Joey Amalara. With a name like that, it has to be true. Well, it's good they caught him, right? Yeah, I guess. Well, I gotta go. I gotta get back to class before Miss Thompson puts my head on a pike. You know her. The minute Logan left, the news spread like a wildfire. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. continued writing my essay. I got frustrated and 
then tore it up and started again because I couldn't remember what in the hell I was trying to say. It was in the papers the next day. There was a picture of Amalara. It showed a rather sad looking boy with an olive complexion and dark eyes and pockmarks on his nose. The boy had not yet confessed, but the evidence against him was strong. He and Gail Kerman had argued a great deal in the last month or so and had broken up the week before. The police had found a picture of Gail in his apartment that had been cut up with a pair of scissors. It was true then. It had to be true. I walked that night. I had a headache, and I walked for air, smelling the wet, misty smell of the spring that was slowly wiping away the reluctant snow. For me, that was one of the most beautiful nights I can remember. The people I passed under the streetlights were murmuring shadows, and all of them seemed to be lovers walking with hands and eyes linked. I walked until nearly midnight, until I was thoroughly mildewed, and I passed many shadows, heard many footfalls, clicking dreamily off down the winding paths. Who is it to say that none of those shadows was not the man or thing that came to be known as spring Jack? Not I, for I passed many shadows, but in the fog, I saw no faces. first runner-up in the new Miss England pageant the year before. She was brainy too. Until the time of her death, she had been editor of the school newspaper and a member of the drama team. My freshman year, I had submitted a column idea to the paper and asked her for a date. Turned down on both counts, and now she was dead. Worse than dead. I walked to my afternoon classes like everyone else, nodding to people I knew and saying hi with a little more force than usual as if that would make up for the close way I studied their faces. There was someone dark among us, as dark as a path which twisted across the mall or wound among the hundred-year oaks on the quad in the back of the gymnasium. We looked into each other's faces and tried to read the darkness behind one of them. This time the police had arrested no one. The fog had protected the grounds of the school on the nights of the 18th, 19th, and 20th. It was fairly quiet, with no trace of spring Hill Jack since the death of Anne Bray. The police issued a mandatory 9.30 curfew. The days continued, warm and overcast. Some students even thought that these murders were some type of homage to Jack the Ripper. The resemblance between the two killers was uncanny. Anne Bray had been found on a soggy path of ground, 12 feet away from the nearest sidewalk. And yet, there were no footprints, not even her own much like the case of Jack the Ripper. Twilight came, and the fog with it. It was soft, insubstantial stuff, but somehow frightening. spring Jack was a man, no one seemed to doubt that. But the fog was his accomplice, and it was female, or so it seemed to me. It was as if... Our little school was caught between them, squeezed in some crazy lover's embrace, part of a marriage that had been consummated in blood. I sat and watched the lights come on in the growing darkness and wondered if it was all over.
It's gonna snow soon. Did the weatherman say that? Nah. Who needs the weatherman? Hey, have you heard of Strawberry Spring? Maybe. A long time ago. Isn't that something old people talk about? Ugh. Strawberry Spring is like Indian summer. You get a good Indian summer here once every two or three years. And, uh... <clears throat> A spell of weather like that is only supposed to come every eight or ten years. Shut up. <laughs> it's a fall spring, a lying spring, just like Indian summer is a fall summer. My grandma used to say, when there's a strawberry spring, the worse the winter is going to be. And the longer the spring, the harder the storm is going to be. Folk tales, never believe a word, but I'm nervous, are you? Not really. Sometimes I think everyone but me and the... <laughs> and sometimes I wonder about the... Wanna play some Xbox? Oh, I'll even let you choose the game this time. Chemistry test next week. I gotta settle down with magic markers and a few piles of useless notes. Come on. long time after he was gone, I could only look out the window. And even after I'd opened my book and started in, part of me was still out there, walking in the shadows where something dark was now in charge. That night, Adele Parkins was killed. spring Jack killed her just the same, going unearingly for one of our own. The false spring, the lying spring, aided and abetted him. He killed her and left her prop behind the wheel of her car to be found the next morning. And they found part of her in the back seat and part of her in the trunk. And written in blood on the windshield this time, fact instead of rumor, were two words, ha, ha. The day after Adele's death, the school decided to close until the murder was caught. Lucky for us, the murderer never was caught, and there were no more mysterious deaths. We were back to normal, as if nothing had ever happened. They called it Strawberry Spring, God knows why, and it's an evil, lying time that only comes once every eight or ten years. spring Hill Jack left with the fog. That was the year I graduated, the year after I was accepted to university for a psychology course. That was also the year that I met the love of my life and today's paper. Of course I knew it was here. I knew Strawberry Spring had come again. This morning's paper says a girl was killed on the new Sharon campus near the football field. She was killed last night and found in a melting snowbank. She was not all there. My wife is upset. She wants to know where I was last night. I can't tell her because I don't remember. I remember putting my headlights on to search my way through the lovely creeping fog, but that's all I remember. I've been thinking about that foggy night when I had a headache and walked for air, and past all the lovely shadows without shape or substance. And I've been thinking about the trunk of my car, such an ugly word, trunk, and wondering why in the world I should be afraid to open it. I can hear my wife in the next room as I write this, crying. She thinks I was with another woman last night. Oh dear God, I think so too.